Hi, Susan Camilleri with Remax Central, and today I'm going to interview Gary Lundeen, an attorney that I've known for 25 years. Uh, he saw this coming, so he specializes in short sales. So we're going to ask him a couple of questions and kind of guide you through as a seller and as a buyer of a short sale what you are going to come to expect and what you are going to need to get information to myself if I'm helping you sell a home that way or buy one, as well as what you'll need to get to attorney Gary Lundeen. So let's start with the first question to Gary. Okay, Gary, if you can give us a little bit of an idea that exactly how does a seller qualify for a hardship for a short sale? Well, first of all, there are no set rules for that uh, procedure. There's uh, various hardships that can exist. They include illness, illness of a family member, loss of job, uh, cutback in wages, transfers uh, to another location, uh, along with the fact uh, of the hardship comes the necessity, unfortunately, that you have to be in default on the loan. The banks will not negotiate if you're current on the loan. So good behavior is not rewarded, bad behavior is rewarded. Great, I think that gives some information. Now, if you're a seller and you feel you qualify for this, what paperwork and information do you need from the client? We wait until the realtor has the home sold. There is no percentage in wasting anybody's time pre-negotiating with the lenders what might happen, candy and nuts type of uh, mentality. We prefer when the contract comes in, we will then give the package to the uh, borrower we require that they get it back to us within five business days so that we can do a quick turnaround and put it together a short sale package that will promptly get out to the lender. Okay, I'm going to piggyback on that, that then the realtor also gets some information to Gary regarding the market analysis on your property and the negotiations that we did so we can prove to the bank that we really did, in fact, try to get as much as we possibly could. Now, if you're a buyer on a short sale, Gary, Give us a little bit of an idea. Does the buyer need to do his attorney approval and home inspection prior to submit it to the seller's lender? Well, the problem with the industry is that the buyer's realtors, uh, for the most part, are cannibalizing each other. They're bringing unrealistic expectations to these transactions. And the attorneys that are representing them, in many cases, are, are not doing a whole lot better. Uh, they need to realize that these type of transactions are not going to happen overnight. So when you come in with a 14-day closing date, uh, it's unrealistic. Also, we have gotten to the point where the amount of volume we do on these, we've learned our lessons. We've made uh, the same mistake uh, enough times that we won't uh, henceforth do any more uh, short sale negotiations where the buyer still has the right to do a home inspection and walk away from the transaction or not put down earnest money and walk away from the transaction or a host of other escape clauses that uh, come up from time to time. There, the deal has to be solid as a rock before uh, anybody's going to feel comfortable wasting uh, 90 days trying to put one together. That was my next question. Approximately once we have buyer and seller in agreement on price dates that we hope for and home inspection issues, approximately how long do you think a buyer and a seller have to be prepared to wait till we can actually get to a closing? My minimum is 90 days to get a short sale approved. I, they can take longer. FHA and VA tend to take longer. Uh, some Lenders are not equipped to do short sales uh, as well as others, and they, for, for whatever reason, do take longer from time to time. Uh, there's no rhyme or reason. If you come in with an offer that's not sufficient to match the value as established by the, the bank, uh, that one's going to definitely take longer because you're going to waste, uh, who knows, uh, 30 to 120 days arguing about the valuation. And also the lender can come back with a counter asking for slightly more money uh, at the end of this as well before we can get to a closing, correct? They can come back with anything that you can imagine as far as uh, a counter on the pricing, a counter on a promissory note for the borrower to sign, uh, a counter as well as uh, coming in with a cash contribution. Not to mention the fact that you still have to deal with the outstanding association liens as well as potentially a second uh, mortgage that may or may not exist on that particular transaction. And is there a deficiency that a seller has to sign for this, or is that sometimes? That's sometimes. Uh, typically in Illinois, the first lender, uh, if the short sale is successful, is gone. The second lender is only releasing the property, and they're taking generally a minuscule percentage of what they're really owed. They're not releasing, in most cases, unless, that, unless that's specifically negotiated, they're not releasing the party, they're releasing the property. 
Great. Well, thanks, Attorney Gary Lundeen, for giving us a one step at a time on the short sales. Hopefully it gives you some information, and there is some more printable information on this blog. And again, thanks for stopping by the blog. My pleasure.